It's actually really simple. First, you find the element that people remember and that that, that makes the track stand out, the hook. Um, then you make sure your arrangement is done in a way that it builds towards a climax. Mm -hmm. The climax is the moment when the when the room is being unified, when all the hands go in the air and everybody looks around them and smiles and they feel like, wow, we're in this together. Mm. That, that, those are the magic moments. And then you make sure that arrangement is functionally sound for DJ to be played, you know, that... Uh, that uh, that the energy transfers well from start to finish. That there is an intro and an outro because I don't like playing records that uh, make it hard for me to integrate them in a, into a set. Even though sometimes creatively it's more rewarding to do something very unique, mm. I kind of start my tracks simply with a kick drum and and, and and you know start quite minimal and then then build from there. It's, it's really not fancy at all mm. because I know. The meat on the bone is what happens in the middle. You know? The most important thing of a, of a climax is that uh, uh, the dynamic range from one moment to the next is massive. Mm. So while you build up the intensity, intensity, and then from that moment when the drop falls, there needs to be a huge increase in energy. Mm. And the bigger that increase is, the more impact you have, the better that climax works, the more successful the track is. I can already tell in the studio, oh, this is a track that many people are going to play because it just it just explodes. So I'm mm -hmm. always I'm always looking for that explosion. And the, the, the bigger the explosion, and people always say, yeah, but uh, it's, it's not very creative to do, use things like white noise, etc. Yeah, I get that. I use white noise a lot. But it's functional, you know, it, it, it works and you can still make it sound you're a little bit unique if you have, a, you know, if you, if you, if you search for a, a few tricks and alternative solutions to make noise sound a little different, they're out there. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it, the explosion and the recognizability, those two elements is what sells at least my tracks. Mm. No, absolutely. And, and the thing is, like, a lot of people say, oh, yeah, white noise is quite cliche. As if that's a bad thing. It's like, well, cliches are cliche for a reason. It's because they absolutely. tend to be universally true. Exactly. And, and it's a language that everybody understands. And I think this is extremely important. Um, even with abstract art, uh, for me, always a good example is, uh, uh, like, the cubism phase of Picasso. When he, when he painted his his women and his guitars, and they were just cubic cubic objects, uh, you could still immediately see that it was a guitar or a woman, even though he used a language that was unfamiliar, but at the same time familiar. So even though he used a novel process, he never lost sight of being able to communicate mm. uh, with uh, with uh, with the with the people looking at the picture. And it's the same with music. You can go crazy, but don't lose sight of, uh, of making it, of, of, of the communication. People still need to understand what you're trying to bring across. Mm. So I see a lot, I think good experimental music still knows to somehow um convey a conventional message yeah totally you know totally. Is, that's for instance i think that's what i keep coming back to james holden uh peak james holden and his border community days he was so good at novel sound design but at the same time bringing across traditional dance floor dynamics uh that made it easy for every dj to play the record and mm. for every dancer to understand the record mm. and uh, yeah so Functionality is something you shouldn't abandon if you make dance music.